friendship between Austria and France must be cemented by marriage. <laughs> My youngest daughter, Antoine, will be Queen of France. Welcome to the court of Versailles in the 18th century. This is Marie Antoinette, a film that was equally loved and equally loathed by critics and by spectators and certainly by my students. I'm going to confess at the outset, Marie Antoinette is my favourite of all of Coppola's films and I have a lot of time for Sofia Coppola. I think she's carved out a fantastically innovative position in a very difficult uh, area in American mainstream slash Hollywood cinema. The biggest criticism that was levelled at the film that I could tell from the contemporary critics was if a filmmaker decides to depict history on film, the filmmaker has a responsibility to that history. So obviously, this film was critiqued as frivolous adolescent period drama. The sequence that you're currently watching looks pretty frivolous adolescent. Uh, it looks almost playful. In some of the worst criticism of the film, certainly some of the harshest, the film was accused of abusing historical fact, of abusing historical events. What, critics asked, does this film have to do with history? Could we even call it a film history? That's precisely the question I want to tackle in this segment of Close Up. What does a film have to do with history? My answer in the case of Marie Antoinette is simply everything. I'm going to argue that Marie Antoinette is in fact a very sophisticated film about history. In spite of its divisiveness, this film has a lot to say about the way we experience the past and the way that the past becomes present and relevant to us in the present. Let's look at a scene from the film and I'm going to try to explain what I mean. What you're listening to is Bow Wow Wow's 1982 new wave classic, I Want Candy, which is itself a cover of a 60s song. So what is Coppola doing? Cutting 18th century history to new wave music. I mean, it's the height of anachronism. Okay, start looking at the way movements engage with the music the way that images and sounds start to almost become rhythmic. It is a history film, obviously. Uh, Coppola went to such great lengths to actually be able to shoot at Versailles. I think it's the first film, in fact, that was ever granted permission to shoot within Versailles. In another sense, though, it seems almost a subversion of history. Can a filmmaker actually be interested in historical fact and then completely exaggerate it to this extent to give it a new rhythm, a new sensibility, to try to bring it into the contemporary? And I suppose that's the foundation of my argument, that this is not history as detached, clinical, authoritative fact but as a living, breathing history in the present. I've actually been watching this sequence for years. Uh, it's always perplexed me. Uh, it's always been at the heart of what I love about the film. A few years ago, I was teaching this in a class and I showed these sequences that you've just watched. For example, the way that images are cut together on a beat. I hope you noticed that. Uh, you can take it back if you wish, but you can see that Coppola is actually cutting the imagery to the beats of the songs, usually on hard beats. That's interesting in itself. You might have got a sense that when we cut to people walking through the frame, weirdly they seem to be walking to a beat. Again, all very odd because obviously these people are trapped in the 18th century in a period drama. I was teaching the film and I asked them some of these same questions that, uh, questions that I'm asking you to think about. And this fantastic student cautiously uh, piped up and said, it's as if all of them are listening to the music. And it was that moment that I paused and I thought, of course, that's the answer. They're actually listening to the music. The past and the present 
become conflated because these figures in the Versailles court in Sofia Coppola's larger-than-life hyper-real history, they're actually listening to Bow Wow Wow. Uh, we know that Sofia Coppola used temp tracks, temporary music, in the filming of Marie Antoinette. We can clearly see that these bodies are animated by the rhythm of Bow Wow Wow New Egg music. And this seems to me the crux of the question. On one level, yes, we can criticise it as a history. We can always argue that film has not been faithful to history. Some of my favourite films are absolutely aggressively unhistorical. Uh, and perhaps they should be criticised for that. Consider what Oliver Stone did with the opening montage in JFK to completely problematise a 1960s history. Now when we look at the music again, Can you feel this rhythm? Have a look at the way the sequence is being cut. It's as if history is quite literally in front of our eyes being brought to life by a rhythm. They're listening to the music. We now also see that in subtle ways and sometimes not so subtle ways, it's as if they're moving to the music, as if their bodies are moving to the music, vibrating with this music from the present. Sophia Coppola has done this throughout her work, from uh, The Glorious Virgin Suicide to Lost in Translation to Somewhere. All of these films in some way are asking questions about the way that the past becomes the present. This isn't film as documentary. This is where I think critics get it wrong. Films about history don't necessarily need to be faithful to a history. They need to invent history. That's the entire point of historical filmmaking. It's not to be detached, objective, authoritative. Films about history are not necessarily factual. In the case of one of the great examples, in my opinion, with this film, history is instantaneously rhythmic, pulsing, playful, comical. Uh, it's history as a sort of hyper-real lens. Coppola understands that film history is always a reflection all of her movies are subjective reflections. But this one is particularly intimate, I think, because this is a reflection on a historical past that she's bringing to her own contemporary point of view. And it's in the essence of that point of view, that unique way of seeing the world, that I think makes Coppola such a provocative filmmaker when she does turn her eye to history. It's her subjectivity that makes history rich. How do you make history present to a modern film audience? To an audience so cut off from Versailles that most of us probably have very little idea about the historical context. Well, you cut a sequence in the court to the rhythm of Bow Wow Wow. That's how you bring it to life. You reconstruct the past through the impressionistic lens of the present. On a last point, let's get a bit more philosophical. All of history is always present to us. If history wasn't present to us, it'd be past. It'd be forgotten and irrelevant. And I hope that this history of Versailles is as pulsing and as urgent and as now for you as it is for me. Thanks very much for listening. Hey. 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 Hey.